I'm trying to break this down for anyone who's wondering about the ventilator. So if you're trying to study for a med school exam, I'm sorry, this is not the right video for you. I'm the Intense MD, a double board certified intensivist here to give you an inside look into the intensive care unit. Today, we're gonna to talk about the ventilator. When most people think about life support, they think about mechanical ventilation. This video is geared towards anyone. I'm gonna break the ventilator down so anyone can understand it, whether you have a medical background or not, because the purpose of this channel is to educate everyone about the intensive care unit. I asked in my Instagram stories if you guys prefer two short videos or one big long video about the vent, and most people said they would prefer this condensed into two smaller videos. The first thing to point out is life support is just that. It is not treatment for an illness. It is to support the body while it attempts to heal itself or while we give treatments for that illness. First, let's talk about how the lungs work. You breathe in and you breathe out. When you breathe in or inhale, that brings oxygen into the lungs. When you breathe out or exhale, you blow carbon dioxide out of the lungs and out of the body. Not to get too technical, but the lungs have these small sacs called alveoli, which collect the oxygen and communicate with the blood vessels to put oxygen into the blood, or what we call oxygenate the blood. That oxygenated blood is then circulated throughout the body to deliver oxygen to all of the organs. Once the organs use up the oxygen, they give back carbon dioxide, which is placed into the blood in the veins and brought back to the lungs so the lungs can collect that and blow it out. So the reason why someone may need to go on a ventilator is typically a breakdown in some part of this process. Either their oxygen levels are too low in their body and it's not sufficient enough to deliver enough oxygen to the organs. Somebody is not able to ventilate or blow off their carbon dioxide levels so the carbon dioxide levels get too high in the body. If somebody's not breathing fast enough or not at all, and again, this can cause higher levels of carbon dioxide in the body. If somebody's respiratory muscles are too weak to breathe, if they're not able to get in a good breath to bring in all of that oxygen, or if there's a concern that someone might choke on their saliva or mucus, and this can be for many reasons, but sometimes in order to protect their lungs from what we call aspiration, and that's bringing some type of fluid or substance from the outside will try to protect them this way by placing them on a ventilator just so there's a tube in that spot to prevent more substance from getting into the lungs. So just to correlate some of these things with medical problems that can cause somebody to go on the ventilator, and again this is not an exhaustive list, this is just very quick examples of some common causes. So Severe pneumonia can cause somebody's oxygen levels to be very low and they need to go on the ventilator. A COPD exacerbation, and this is a flare-up of somebody's COPD, might cause them to not be able to ventilate well or get rid of that carbon dioxide in their body, so we put them on the ventilator. In the setting of a drug overdose, particularly opiate overdoses, opiates bind to a receptor in the brain that controls the breathing rate. So this slows down their breathing to a very slow level or even can cause them to stop breathing. In the situation of uncontrolled seizures, sometimes someone might not be able to protect their airway as well and we have a concern for aspiration or it could affect their breathing in general. Sometimes a person may have tongue or lip swelling. We call this angioedema, it could be from a medication. Um, or it could be just a reaction that their body's having to protect their airway or make sure they're able to bring on all that oxygen because if their tongues and lips swell to a point that they're not able to take a good deep breath in, that's a problem. In the setting of cardiac arrest, somebody has stopped breathing completely, so we put them on the ventilator to while we're resuscitate them to support their breathing. So the process of putting somebody on a vent is called intubation. And this is when we take an endotracheal tube and put it in somebody's mouth 
through their vocal cords into their trachea, also known as the windpipe. There are also some occurrences where somebody may be nasally intubated, and that means in the nose, down the back of the throat, through the vocal cords, because everything here is connected. But that's rare. I've only seen it a handful of times for different reasons. When we're placing somebody on a ventilator, we give them, in most cases, we give them what we call induction medications. And this is something that will sedate them very quickly so we can have them asleep when we are doing this procedure. There are some very rare circumstances where we are not able to sedate, but an awake intubation is not a common thing. So once somebody's on a ventilator, the first thing we do is what settings of the ventilator are we going to put somebody on? So there are different modes of ventilation. So it's usually either pressure controlled or volume controlled. In general, a lot of people use volume control and you are setting for the amount of oxygen somebody's on, you set a pressure, which is called the PEEP. And this is the amount of pressure that somebody gets at the end of the breath to keep those sacs inside the lungs open. And also the FiO2 fraction of inspired oxygen. And that is a percentage. Usually if we're thinking about somebody's coming off the vent, they're looking better, their PEEP's around five. is not doing well and we have to keep increasing the PEEP up to 10, 12, 14, then that to, to us is a high ventilator setting. And then, like I said, the, the FiO2 can go up to 100. Usually if somebody's doing better, it's usually 40%. We consider that, you know, a lower ventilator setting. So a common misconception is, you know, somebody's oxygen percentage on the vent might be 60%. And, you know, you might hear that and be like, oh, that's not too bad. It's not 100. But if their PEEP along with that is 10, then that is still a moderate amount of support from a ventilator. The other settings that we control are how fast somebody is breathing or respiratory rate and the amount of volume, the target volume that we're giving them from the ventilator. And these are things that help clear the carbon dioxide. Tidal volume is based on somebody's height and we calculate something called the ideal body weight. And that's based on how tall you are because, you know, I'm tall, so my lungs are a different height and size than somebody who's a foot shorter than me. So they require a different volume to fill it up. If you think about you know, tall frappuccino versus a venti frappuccino, it's a different amount of volume to fill those up. So while somebody is on the ventilator, I commonly get asked, you know, am I going to be aware of this? How much am I going to know? So like I said, we sedate patients while we're doing the process of putting them on the ventilator, but we also keep them sedated for a lot of the time that they're on the ventilator, depending on how their breathing's doing. Sometimes it's absolutely necessary for us to keep them very sedated so their lungs don't breathe, try to breathe against the ventilator. It's very common for damaged lungs to try to breathe against the ventilator and fight the ventilator. Some things that we monitor while somebody's on the vent are their percentage of oxygen on the monitor. We measure partial pressure of oxygen and partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood through something called an arterial blood gas. And those numbers help us determine if the ventilator settings that patient is on are correct for that patient and helpful to that patient or if any changes need to be made. So like I said, there's a whole process to determine whether or not somebody is going to be coming off the ventilator. So that is what I'm going to be discussing in the next video, which should be up tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I can address them in the comment section or in another video if it requires more discussion. You can follow me on Instagram at the Intense MD. If you'd like to hear more breakdowns of ICU topics, then you can find more videos here. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel.